Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you. Before he heads to the airport, Richard Chen puts on gold buckled suspenders, a mile wide gold tie, a double breasted suit and black Carrera sunglasses, runs his fingers through his hair and slicks it back. It is the same look he presented at work in the 1980s. On a Motorola StarTac flip phone he tapes his printed out boarding pass, SFO to John Wayne Airport, Orange County, California. He brings a Zero Halliburton aluminum suitcase, inside which are the following, an Nokia brick phone, three stacks of fake $100 bills, wrapped in $10,000 stacks, and three clear plastic bags of powdered sugar, five pounds total. At security, he places his phone on the scanner. It passes. He is heartened by this. Then, he casually puts the suitcase on the X-ray scanner. TSA thought this was not very funny, he later captions on Instagram. But, somehow, Chen makes it through to his intended destination, a car show. What kind of show is worth that sort of commitment? What show is worth messing with potential federal drug smuggling charges to get there? The event in question is Radwood 2, an 80s and 90s celebration honoring the same era when John Z. DeLorean tried something similar but fared much worse. It's an explosion of excess, a neon-tinged nostalgia rom, and a show that, with a healthy dose of irony, commemorates the way things were or, at the very least, what those of us who were born too late believe it all was like. The first Radwood, held in the Bay Area in early June 2017, summoned about 170 cars. Like any good sequel, however, December's Radwood 2 was bigger and flashier than the original. This time, twice as many cars and their period dressed owners descend upon a German beer garden outside Anaheim, California. Two decades means a lot of ground to cover. Under a Grand Circus tent are a grey Ferrari Testrosa, a Toyota Land Cruiser, a Jägermeister livery BMW M3, that eventually wins best in show, and a Chevy Blazer from the cult 80s BMX movie Rad. Outside is a Mercedes-Benz 560 sec, already the butt of a thousand white powder jokes, with custom gullwing doors raised skyward, the coked-up fever dream of obscure, sadly defunct German tuner styling garage. Monster brings a Japanese market only on those Cosmo, the world's cleanest 929 and the astounding MX-5 Miata Coupe concept. On the lawn are such luminaries as a 1991 Pontiac Bonneville with a genuine Labra, a ferocious Saab 900, the world's most immaculate Datsun 280ZX Black Gold Edition and the BMW C3 from the 1995 James Bond flick Golden Eye complete with the cosplaying Natalia Simonova. A crowd gathers to hear the banshee wail of an electric Mazda RX-7, whose batteries are charged by an RC airplane's mini gas turbine. A cloud of white smoke shoots out of the hood-mounted exhaust, over the windshield. As they marvel, three guys in parachute pants swerve by on Honda Moto Compos, stopping occasionally to fold and unfold the little scoots in front of G-God admirers. There are few shows where a Dodge Ram panel van parks next to a dozen Porsche 911s. There are few shows where a Dodge Ram panel van is even allowed. There are few shows where any of these things happen. Automotive journalist Bradley Brownell is one of Radwood's co-founders. On this afternoon, he wears a grey Jeff Gordon sweatshirt and Jeff Gordon track pants, emblazoned with his number 24. He bought a Jeff Gordon digital watch just for the occasion. He and I gleefully compare digital watches. Radwood, as its name suggests, is an American take on the Goodwood revival. But the revival celebrates Great Britain at a very specific time period, the 50s and 60s. Americans bought MGs and Jaguars, discovered sporting motoring, bought Beatles albums by the armful. British culture sunk its teeth into the right people. The whole thing was very British, says Brownell so it makes sense for Goodwood to promote those eras. When was American pop culture ever so impactful? Poodle skirts and Elvis, leather jackets and Holse Rebellion? 50s nostalgia became an obsession in the 80s, 
folks are always looking back in 30-year intervals. And if you want to see a Chevy Bel Air, there are a dozen hot rod cruisins happening as you read this. No, the apex of American culture was the 80s and 90s, we gave the world Hawaiian shirts and pastel blazers and talking Pontiacs, we smuggled Levi's jeans across the Iron Curtain. Teens in Belarus recognized the danger of the Terminator T-800. The biggest movies and TV shows were peons to Reaganomics, and we sent them everywhere because we were the flashy, glamorous, white-hot center of the universe. In the 60s and 70s, we were importing culture, says Brownell, and the 80s and 90s, we were exporting culture. So we influenced. An automotive event celebrating the era was bound to happen. And indeed it had, but not on a scale like this. Brownell and company took the initiative, opening the doors to all things vaguely, indescribably rad. You can argue all day about whether a third-generation Camaro is a good car, it most likely is not, but it is big and brash. Turns out, big and brash is what America's always done best. Sometime between its first and second events, fueled by its popular Facebook group, Radwood became a dubiously accurate mind meld of everything people my age imagined the era to have been. They began posting pictures of era-specific cars they encountered in the wild. They shared YouTube commercials for New Coke, eBay listings for flip phones, Patrick Nagel art, skateboards, three spoke wheels, vintage Walkmans. Radwood became a hashtag. For music producer Pat Lukens, who goes by the name Iron, it all made sense. As a teenager, he learned to shred on guitar from Van Halen's first album, and he's carried that aesthetic ever since, even before it was cool again. In many ways, the 80s is kind of like now. In the 80s, you had Reagan and mainstream conservatism. Same thing like now. All of the pop part of the 80s is so escapist and insane and coked out. Since I was a youth, I was into these cars in high school, and nobody in my school cared, says Ban Shu, the editor-in-chief of Japanese Nostalgic Car, who has also arranged 80s and 90s car shows, though only for Japanese cars. I was into 300Z XS, and people in my high school would drive Camaros, and they would make fun of me. I do feel somewhat vindicated. Somewhere on a fundamental level, between growing out facial hair and realizing that we may never have a house and a 401k, our internet-damaged brains developed a sense of irony, the ability to poke fun at ourselves. Hence, the fake drugs, the ugly jackets. But there's genuine enthusiasm for these not-too-old cars from a hyper-technological era, quick and daily usable, now classics in their own right. Viewed through the hazy imperfection of nostalgia, the enthusiasm envelops even the most modest, bizarre and ironic of vehicles, all are welcome, all are worth remembering. We are witnessing an entire generation redefining car culture on its own terms. People have been saying that it's going to happen. It will happen someday, it's just around the corner, it's only a matter of time, maybe 5, 10 years from now, once all of us in our 20s and 30s totally grow up, will appreciate all this stuff. But no, what Radwood has defiantly shown is that it has arrived, it is here now, it isn't going to happen, it's happening now, thank you for watching our video. Please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you.